If you've thought about reselling and you want to get started, Dollar Tree Retail Arbitrage is a great way to do that. But there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of bad advice. So in this video, we're going to go over some of the lies you might have heard. And then hopefully I can clear that up for you. Lie number one is the price increase at Dollar Trees makes it not worth it. And that's just simply not worth True, as many of you are aware of, Dollar Trees have begun raising prices due to supply chain constraints, due to inflation possibly, who really knows? Uh, and there are some people out there who say, oh geez, this is no longer worth it because it's a quarter more. So that's false for a few reasons. Reason number one, it's a quarter more. Uh, if you're only making a quarter on your items, you were doing it wrong. And reason number two is the more economically based reason uh, and that's that these source charges the supply charge the cost from the supplier however you want to put it that uh, any price increase they have will always be pushed to the end consumer so if you're buying pencils and the cost of wood costs more the middleman is not losing money they just charge more for their pencils and that that theory that concept holds true for ebay retail arbitrage as well if dollar tree begins selling dvds for a buck 25 which they have my lowest price I'm going to sell it for is going to go from $7.95 to $8.15. It's, it's pretty simple, or $8.20, I guess, actually. Pretty simple. Uh, by no means is that something you should be worried about. It is going to make things cost more. Maybe in the long run, you're going to have a few less sales. I doubt it. Maybe as the people who have their $1 stock um, refuse to raise their prices, you're going to have less sales because they're not going to raise their price, and you're going to have a higher price. But once their stock uh, is purchased, all sold out, then the market price will rise and you're gonna be in the same position you were earlier. Lie number two is that it's wrong or unethical to do this. And they say, you shouldn't be buying this because you're just selling it. And, and really it's, there's not a lot of logic or rationality to it because it's, of course it's your money, it's your time. You can do whatever you want with that. But I'm gonna give you an example where it's not ripping someone off. It's actually a mutually beneficial transaction. So let's say Ted has a job in the middle of nowhere he lives 30 minutes from a Walmart, 30 minutes from a Dollar Tree, 30 minutes from everything. And his job is he, he, he's a, a call center, you know, remote worker, and he does tech support, makes 20 bucks an hour. Let's say when he went into town two days ago to do his shopping for the next two weeks, he forgot to get envelopes and he has to send them out in five days or seven days uh, for a party in three weeks. And that's just the way he does things. So what he has, Ted has two opportunities, two chances, two ways of going about getting these envelopes. One, he can drive into town you know, take an hour off work or take an hour of his free time. We'll say his time is worth 20 bucks an hour because he's a remote worker at a call center and I'm sure that they have very high limits on how much you can work. Uh, he can take that hour off of work, drive there, buy it, drive back. All in all, that's costing him about 25 bucks. 20 bucks in opportunity cost where he could be working, uh, we'll say five bucks in gas, and then maybe 26 bucks, 26, 25. So he spends 26, 25 plus tax <laughs> to, um, to get this thing when what he could have done is gone on ebay paid five bucks for it plus shipping and sure he's spending six times more than the actual products cost right but in the long run and in the short run too he's saving himself about 20 bucks because he can use his time better than driving to the store buying this one thing and going home so when you sell this Dollar Tree retail arbitrage stuff, a, a big driving factor of a lot of your sales is going to be convenience, and you want to remember that. The third lie I hear all the time, especially in the comments, is if you don't find anything in 10 minutes, you just go home, it's not worth your time. And these are people who really like to throw the towel in soon. Out of the whole Dollar Tree store, I would estimate 5 to 10% of the items, and that could even be generous are worth reselling. Maybe it's maybe it's 2%, who knows, they've got a lot of stuff in there. If you don't find anything in your first 10 minutes, just keep looking things up, keep scanning things, keep looking up uh, keywords on eBay. Because once you find those things, most likely they are gonna be replenishable items. Uh, seasonal stuff, not so much, but like Haribo gummies. Uh, envelopes, like in the previous example. Once you find those things and what they go for and what you can sell them for online, you can replenish those, you can use different keywords, and even though it took you half an hour to find your first item, because you have that knowledge now, you can keep using that time and time again. You can say, okay, this sells for this from Dollar Tree. I'll look for similar items at Walmart. I'll look for similar items at garage sales, potentially. Uh, you really have to build off your existing knowledge. And so don't be discouraged. And those who say you should be your liars, uh, it really is a knowledge game. Number four is that shipping fees take away most of the profit and therefore it's not worth it. And that's kind of true. So on some of these items, 
Shipping is a large portion of the costs, but we're not focusing about how much fees we can or can't pay. We're focusing on how much profit we can make. That's kind of a, a mental block a lot of beginners have, is they fixate on fees and shipping and all that stuff as opposed to the money in their account. So if I sell uh, a rare painting that I paid $2 for and it sells for 70 bucks and 30 bucks is shipping and 10 bucks is fees, I'm paying more than half of my money in fees, but I'm still making, what is that, $29, $28? And for a lot of people, for me probably, if it sells fast, that's still definitely worth it. You just have to remember that, okay, what I'm doing here is not focusing on avoiding pain or punishment. I'm trying to maximize profit. And thinking like that is really going to uh, restructure the way you view the world. The fifth lie that I hear is that retail arbitrage at Dollar Tree just simply is not worth even trying because there are so many more better opportunities out there. You can make $2,000 in an hour selling a car. Why would you bother doing Dollar Tree retail arbitrage? And the answer is because you're going to learn so much doing this. Are there any full-time Dollar Tree retail arbitrages out there? I don't think so. But are there people who are full-time in the resale world who started off with this and learned the basics, learned the processes, learned, hey, here's how you list stuff, here's how you ship stuff, with very low buy-in cost, and then they took the knowledge they gained, built upon this, and now they have a full-time sixty dollars to $100,000 income? Yes. Absolutely there are. I talk to them in the comments all the time. Dollar Tree or Dollar Store flips are great to make a little bit of extra cash, but the real huge awesome benefit of this is you are learning new skills with pretty easy, pretty accessible uh, entryways. Hope this video cleared things up. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, comment below with any more questions you have. My name is Blake, and as always, thanks for watching.